There are countless incredible devs in the FOSS world, and many of them are really dedicated to their work. They'll spend hours upon hours on end working on a very simple problem. Many of them are not getting paid to do so, but it takes a special kind of dedication to do something like this. I booted Linux 292,612 times, and this took 21 hours of work. And all this was done for was for a very, very simple bug. A bug that seemed kind of unexplainable. Many of us have seen these weird bugs that don't seem to make any sense. Like, randomly, I will open QPW graph and none of my pipe wire inputs are listed. Or I'll open awesome WM and my mouse is not being detected. Or I'll open OBS and my camera is not listed and none of my portals are accessible. And these are all really annoying problems, but I have absolutely no idea how to replicate them. And it's not like they happen every single time. They happen once every 10, 20, or maybe even 100 times of doing that operation. And I'm just not going to spend that time trying to track down why it's happening. And this developer is doing exactly that. So it turns out that in Linux 6.4, there is this really weird bug where on boot, it just randomly hangs and doesn't complete the boot process. You have to restart the system and then it boots perfectly fine. The dev didn't know why, but he noticed it happening. In QEMU, one every 300 times on an AMD CPU and once every thousand times on Intel. He reported this upstream to QEMU because, you know, that just makes sense to do. He had a situation where he could replicate it by just restarting over and over and over again until it happens, but that's pretty much as far as he got initially. This dev was testing it with Fedora, but separate devs over on Hacker News have replicated the exact same problem using Arch Linux. So it seems to be a problem in the upstream kernel, but at this point, nobody was really sure why it was happening. But also, considering how rare it is, you might just not really care about it being a bug. Most people just would restart their system and go about their day. But in this case, it's a little bit different because he's not worrying about his host system, he's worrying about a test suite. This developer also works on a project called NBD Kit, a NBD server with a stable plugin API and permissive license. What it does, not really that important. The important part is one of the things it relies on. It relies on libguestfs. This is a tool for accessing and modifying virtual machine disk images. And seemingly randomly, when it got up to the part using guestfish, one of the parts of libguestfs, it just hangs. Unclear why, it just doesn't work anymore. And the problem with the test suite as opposed to just daily operation. In daily operation, if something goes wrong, it doesn't really matter. You just restart and then the problem goes away. But with a test suite, you want a very consistent and reproducible result. If you don't have that, you can't properly test things because you don't know what sort of output you're going to be getting. So at least in my opinion, even if it fails once every 10,000 times when it's just not supposed to fail, that's probably a good enough reason to try to track down the problem. And every time it hung, it hung at the exact same point. So it'd show all of this text up here and then stop at freeing SMP alternatives memory 48k. If it didn't hang, the next thing it would show is the CPU the system is using. So, one very simple question. How do you track down a bug that you have no idea why it's happening? You have no replication conditions. The only thing you know is boot Linux. It breaks sometimes. How do you find that bug? Well, you restart the system over and over and over and over and over again until the problem actually happens. And he made a very simple loop to go and do that. In some cases, it might take a couple of hours for a problem to actually occur. If you're trying to track down a buggy commit, you can't just do things completely randomly. It makes a bit more sense to try to limit your range to something 
a bit more reasonable. So he knows the problem occurs on Linux 6.4 RC5. But where's the first place it doesn't happen? He managed to track this back to Linux 6.0. Also, you have to be very wary of false positives, because he initially thought he actually found the commit that caused the problem. This commit right here. The problem is it didn't actually fix the problem by removing it. What it did is made the problem rarer. So, <laughs> clearly that's not what we want. Yeah, rarer is fine. It's slightly better than where we're at right now, but it would be much nicer to have Zero problem. So I guess scratch that off the drawing board. Let's look at another one. After a bunch of other testing, he found this merge commit right here, which he was going to run a million tests against to see if getting rid of it would fix the problem. After 25,000, 57,000, 121,000, 253,000, 292,612 successful iterations, he's gonna say that this commit right here, this merge commit, is bad. This limits it down to a lot less work, but it is still a merge commit, not an individual commit changing one or two different files. During this process, he also made a test hook to run the test in parallel, called boot 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 .c. In this case, he's running it with eight separate threads, all trying to boot Linux at the exact same time. This is just so it gets done in any reasonable length of time. But now that he's down to one merge commit, all he has to do is run the test on each of the individual commits, and if you remove one, see which one fixes the problem eventually tracking it down to schedule slash clock. Fix local clock before schedule underscore clock underscore init. Have local clock return schedule clock if schedule clock init has not yet run. Schedule clock CPU has this check, but it was not included in the new no insta implementation of local clock. The effect can be seen on x86 with config print k time enabled, for instance. SCD clock quickly reaches the value of tick nsec and that value is returned until schedule clock init runs. And since it seems like he has a solution, he sends it up to the Linux kernel mailing list. Print k .time causes rare kernel boot hangs. Recent kernels hang rarely when booted on QEMU. Usually you need to boot hundreds or thousands of times to see the hang, compared to 292,612, so on and so forth. Successful boots, which I was able to do before the problematic commit. But this work isn't by this developer, so he knows that reverting this commit fixes the problem, but I don't know why this commit is wrong but can we revert it as it causes serious problems with libguestfs hanging randomly? Or if there's anything you want me to try out, then let me know, because I can reproduce the problem locally quite easily. For anyone curious, printk is a basic logging function in the kernel, and then .time will get the timestamp of an event. As you're going through the kernel operations, whether that's the boot sequence or anything else, you want to be able to log events and log when they're actually happening. But here's where it gets really neat. While removing this commit did fix the problem in this case, this commit was not actually the root cause. This was just a symptom of a completely separate problem. This problem was already being discussed in the kernel mailing list. Observing RCU stools in kernel 5.4, 5.10, 5.15, and 6.1 stable trees. We are seeing RCU stool warnings from recent stable tree updates. 5.24.243, 5.10.what, you can read these numbers. This is seen in the upstream stable trees without any downstream patches. So it's something happening in the kernel that everybody gets. And the commit this developer found is tick slash common align tick period with the hertz tick. Not exactly sure how this commit is affecting all stable kernels. Can you take a look at this issue and share your insights? So after a bunch of discussion, this is the patch that addresses the problem. When the system first boots, all of the timers are synced up and aligned as they should be. The next wake up event is programmed based on aligned value, but the delta value that is used to program the clock event device is computed based on k time get, so they're computed based on two separate functions. 
with the subtracted offset, the device fires in less than the expected time frame. With a large enough offset, the system programs the timer for the next wake-up event and the remaining time left is too little to make any boot progress, the system hangs. Basically, the timers desync, and as they desync, it's supposed to be there to make sure the events that need to happen, happen at the correct time. It gets to the point where there's just not enough time for an event to occur, and it just doesn't know what to do. This developer booting Linux nearly 300,000 times didn't directly fix the problem, and the problem turned out to be a completely separate issue. But that doesn't mean the work that he did goes to waste. We know that this was a commit that was also causing an issue, and that can lead people in the direction to find the root cause of the problem. But look, at the end of the day, most users would never have even known about the problem, never even noticed it. If their system hangs at some point, maybe they'll post a thing on Reddit and be like, why is my system hanging? Everyone is like, my system doesn't hang. The post gets downvoted and we go about our day. But this developer was not satisfied with it. This was a bug and it had to be dealt with. And now it actually has been. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you know about the problem? Has your system randomly hung on 6.4? Do you even care about the problem? Do you think it doesn't matter at all and people should just spend their time doing more important things? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay link down below. That's going to be it for me. And Colonel Devs are absolutely mental.